Hello chess friends and welcome to the Art of Chess channel and welcome back to our Queen's Game Decline series. So in this series we're following this very nice opening from white and from black perspective and today we're continuing with our Queen's Game Decline studies and the so-called Alter Defense. And the Alter Defense we have started recently with a very important line uh, in which we have seen actually how to beat the Alter Defense and in this video I'm going to show you again a different idea for black but again we'll see actually how to beat the Alter Defense because still I think the Alter Defense is something that you should try to avoid so that's why i would not recommend it to play and actually what we want to see is how to beat this very very nine angle opening uh, in my previous video as i said we have stu uh, studied this particular line so d4 d5 c4 c5 after move c5 uh, this is now the so-called austin defense and after move c takes d5 we have analyzed this method uh, queen to d5 but then we have played something like knight to f3 c takes d4 and then the continuation was knight to c3 the problem Problem, I think um, of the alternate offense is uh, for white here that black doesn't have to necessarily take uh, the pawn out on d5 with the queen black can also play now the so-called goose of counter gambit with the move knight to f6 and what is what black is hoping for is actually to recapture uh, here the pawn with the knight and uh, doesn't, when the queen is of course on d5 then the queen is exposed to white's attacks when the knight is at, uh, on d5 then you cannot actually attack it with the knight because black will simply to trade it off we'll play something like c takes d4 and we'll have i think uh, an equal game so many times uh, what i've seen um, as a mistake here uh, from white's perspective in this particular goose of counter gambit is to move d takes c5 but you see now after move d takes c5 black will simply continue with queen to d5 queen to d5 knight to d5 and now e6 or e5 uh, is now the opportunity maybe knight to a6 knight to knight to a6 knight to c5 simply uh take out the pawn immediately so uh although white should be slightly better because of uh the much much better activity but still uh, this is something that i would not recommend you i'm not sure how to make progress here the, the position is about equal so uh you don't gain so much i think out of this line with the white pieces because i think when we play with the white pieces we want to get more we want to at least have some kind of idea how to attack this position so you see um after move uh, knight to f6 what you also could make um as a maybe an inaccuracy is now this continuation i usually play down this line knight to f3 many many times but i switched now to a line that i will introduce you now into this video in this video after move knight to f3 um, i think black will simply continue with this line see it takes d4 knight to d4 and then knight to d5 okay again white should be slightly better because white can play now e4 uh, will be faster slightly faster in development but this is in my opinion simply too symmetrical we want as i said more and more out of uh, this opening with the white pieces we want to have more and more uh, attacking ideas so that's why and from knight to f6 uh, here comes now a stunning really idea that i wanted to show you today uh, in my opinion the best method to beat the goose of control gamut after moving knight to f6 is to play very aggressively the move e4 and in the beginning it seems so that this is wrong because you're losing a centralizing pawn but the idea about this particular line is to reroute the knight on a more passive square here on c5 because black needs now to react if black doesn't react uh, here correctly then you see we are continuing uh, with a powerful d5, uh, d pawn d5 pawn uh support a d5 pawn uh, by the pawn on e4 so that's why black needs now so it's sort of a forcing line black needs now to take out the pawn on e4 but we play now d takes c5 we are rerouting the knight to c5 or what black could do is also queen to a5 followed with queen to c5 so this uh, two ideas will analyze now in the continuation of the video so let's see now what happens if your opponent plays now the move knight to c5 so okay black took the pawn uh the material is equal uh maybe you can also say white has an isolated pawn this is a weakness but actually in my opinion this d5 pawn is not such a huge weakness because it can be always supported with the move knight to c3 so it's still a powerful pawn and the main 
tactical and attacking goal here from white's perspective is this idea bishop to b5 bishop to b5 is really unpleasant because you cannot cover yourself with the knight you have to cover yourself with the bishop uh here the knight is a little bit loose also uh here on the board so that's why in my opinion uh, this is a much much more powerful line how to beat the austrian fence and the first game uh, in this particular line i wanted to show you it was one of my games against a 2400 rated player i really destroyed him in an early state of the game uh in this particular line so after move knight to c5 my recommendation is here to move to play the move bishop to e3 and this is all also also suggested line by the stockfish engine by the new stockfish 15 uh the the stockfish 15 engine is also uh playing this particular line uh so bishop to e3 is now attacking the knight and your opponent will probably try this one uh bishop to e, uh pardon me e6 uh, is trying to connect the bishop here to the knight on c5 and now we simply develop knight to c3 if your opponent takes then still we can take out with the queen the knight will be centralized and the c7 is a weakness so my opponent tried now bishop to e7 and this move you face many times because it's a natural move your opponent is trying to secure the king by castling it's a good idea and if we take too early here if we take d takes e6 then the bishop or the knight will come out uh here on e6 and black i think has at least equalized the game so that's why my recommendation when your opponent is playing now the move bishop to e7 is to play bishop to b5 after move bishop to d7 we can play bishop to c5 immediately your opponent um ca cannot take out the bishop uh, here on b5 because we simply take out this bishop on e7 queen to e7 and now knight to b5 and this is a lost game maybe you can just play check but for queen to e2 uh, the game is over we can trade off the queens we're up a whole piece so it's not working so that's why you see this move after uh, move bishop to d7 the move bishop to c5 is the most important move now because this knight on c5 was connected to the square e6 and that's a exactly what we want to do we are giving up the bishop pair but the bishop pair is not so important now after move bishop to c5 in the game i tried here the move d takes e6 and look at this if f takes e6 happens then you have this one queen to h5 uh king to f8 uh, has to be played and would we'll simply take out the bishop here on uh, c5 so that's why after move d takes e6 my opponent tried bishop to b5 and that's the beauty about this attack you see it's a beautiful attack information uh, you're playing really actively that's the most important thing here to know this and then we have now of course this intermediate check with f uh, e takes f7 king to f7 and we have even this one queen to b3 we don't have to even trade off the queens and allow our opponent's uh, simplification here my opponent tried queen to g6 and f remove uh here queen to b5 my opponent tried here the check and i simply covered knight to e2 and after a couple more moves the game was practically over so i still can of course secure my king by castle the, the bishop is saying i will connect my rooks i will uh, get the, my pieces on the most active files and also you see uh, the b7 is a weakness the king is of course exposed here on a weird square so this is not working so really really let's go back i think this is much more powerful uh, than to go maybe into some uh, lines after move knight to f6 knight to f3 or maybe d takes c5 i really love this idea e4 knight takes e4 d takes c5 knight to c5 and now bishop to e3 the knight is a little bit loose on the board so that's now the most important thing here to know so let's see now what happens if our opponent plays uh, here uh, something like after move knight to c5 bishop to e3 if he plays e6 immediately knight to c3 then if he tries this one uh, e takes d5 okay now i think we have to uh, play in, uh, queen to d5 uh, after queen to d5 knight to d5 now again the c7 square is so vulnerable uh if your opponent is trying maybe to move uh, knight to a6 uh, then we have this one bishop to c5 bishop to c5 bishop to a6 b takes a6 and look at this we're getting rid of every defender of uh, uh the c7 square and we're playing a beautiful fork so you should not forget about this because um, after move knight to d5 the main goal is now the fork on c7 if the king goes towards the center it's not so good we can play queenside castling and then um uh, the king will be on the d file where of course also the rook is so look at this if king to d8 protecting maybe this one then queen set casting it's really really a devastating position here for uh for black so this is not working so after move knight to d5 your opponent 
will probably play the move knight to e6 it makes really sense because uh it's covering uh the c7 square but now we develop knight to f3 and uh, what maybe black could make as a mistake is this one bishop to d7 maybe trying to develop this bishop on c6 because you get this stunner again a deflection idea we're trying to deflect this knight uh from the defense of the c7 if that happens then of course knight to c7 again a beautiful fork your opponent could maybe try king to d8 would take take and now maybe a check king to d1 after knight to e6 look at this we still have the opportunity to take out the spawn still we can escape with the knight and uh, this is a much much better position here for for white so uh, let's go back uh, instead of this move uh, knight to g5 your opponent could also play of course knight to c6 uh, your opponent doesn't have to uh, necessarily uh, play bishop to d7 your opponent is trying to get some escape uh, uh, escape routes here for the rook but then we play bishop to b5 look at this even if a6 happens then we have knight to b6 as an opportunity so the activity that i think you get here is simply too much to handle here for uh, for white for, for black pardon me queenside calcing will again happen again we get this rook on uh, this file look at this every piece i think of white is playing in beautiful beautiful harmony so as i said this is not working so let's see now what happens if our opponent after this particular line with the move e4 uh, knight takes e4 d takes e5 plays queen to a5 so your opponent does have to of course take out um the pawn with the knight but now actually what what's happening here is uh, again an exposure sort of uh, the queen is exposed the knight is exposed so that's why we play simply bishop to d2 we are attacking the queen your opponent has to make now a reaction don't worry so much about the bishop pair here because although it's such an open game and although maybe the bishops are working fine but i think the only bishops that are fine are white bishops because look at this this bishop is still stuck here um on the starting square this bishop can maybe uh, play here towards um, the king side but actually as we said the main tactical and attacking goal is the move bishop to b5 so that's why this uh, bishop on c8 will eventually come to d7 where it will be probably traded off so the bishop pair is not so important i think here so after move bishop to d2 don't risk uh, uh, don't be frightened to uh, to give up here the dark square bishop because your opponent can play knight to d2 but now after queen to d2 your opponent has now two choices queen to c5 and here also maybe to play the move queen to d2 in one of the game one of the games that i found in the database uh, in one game between let me see Herrin uh, Steingrimson against Martin Breutigam uh, queen to d2 was played and now uh, white simply took knight to d2 g6 b4 look at this bishop to b7 a uh, bishop to g7 and now rook to c1 uh, uh, here white is uh, much much better white has an extra pawn will eventually play knight to f3 bishop to c4 kingside casting and will simply push the pawns on the queen side white is of course a beautiful pawn majority here on the queen side so um, although still it's a complicated game black has sort of a compensation of the bishop here but in my opinion this is not working so let's see now um what should be i think the best line for black but in my opinion still it's not working again we play c takes d5 knight to f6 the goose of counter gambit now we play e4 knight to e4 d takes c5 and now after move bishop to d2 knight to d2 queen to d2 what happens if our opponent now plays the move queen to c5 this makes really really sense because uh, at least he took the pawn now he is continuing maybe with g6 bishop to g7 uh, bishop to f5 maybe knight to d7 knight to b6 so <coughs> maybe in the later stage of the game uh, black will continue the pressure also with the move e6 against his pawn on uh, d5 so now i think we have to be fast if we play now this game too slowly uh, i think we could get destroyed by our opponent's bishop here so that's why you have to be now very very active at least you have to threaten something and i found really uh, some great great attacking ideas with this idea the knight to a3 first of all we have to notice with the move knight to a3 we are threatening the move rook to c8 and uh, if the rook comes on the c file look at the, the bishop is hanging so if you escape with the queen the bishop on c8 will be lost so that's why the uh, bishop has to um, be maneuvered here to d7 still we play rook to c1 and after move um, the queen to b uh, queen to b6 the beautiful part about this move knight to a3 is that now the knight 
can be maneuvered here to c4 where it comes again out with a beautiful beautiful tempo and although um, there are now no winning games in this particular line um for white uh, in the database but still it's a recommended line by the stockish 15 engine uh, this is simply the best method how to beat uh, now this particular line after move 9 to c4 your turn could go here maybe to g6 but now we should simply again develop knight to f3 we have here again this idea e6 in my opinion you face many times this idea e6 simply break the position but now uh, here I wanted to show really really a beautiful beautiful uh, trap uh, here in the alternate defense you can play actually here the move bishop to d3 and if your opponent doesn't react correctly if he steps back i don't know here maybe to to uh, h5 or something then we can of course play knight to, from c to e5 we'll attack the bishop we can take it out uh, we can also play something like knight to a5 uh, here attacking simply uh also the b7 we can so you can play really really many things you can even uh, kingside chaotic but uh here the move bishop to d3 it's a tempting move of course because we are leaving now this g2 unprotected and don't worry because look at this you have so many beautiful pieces already out that you should not be worried uh, just about the pawn so here um, my study that i prepared at home is this particular line what happens if your opponent takes simply uh, the pawn on g2 actually here the game get, get, becomes more and more beautiful because you can even sacrifice the rook how tactically rich really this position can be knight to e5 is also an opportunity because look at this if queen to h1 happens we play king to e2 uh, the queen is attacked and okay let's see now queen to g2 what happens then then you have this particular stunner knight takes d7 and it seems so nothing special dude you just take the bishop uh, we can also take it out with the knight but the problem is now uh, this particular line d takes e6 uh, you have to react here f takes e6 and now bishop to b5 Again, you see uh, this bishop to b5 as an attacking motif is working many, many times uh, for white here in the Austrian defense. The only way to protect this position is to play something like rook to d8, but now we play rook to c8. We're trying to deflect the rook from the defense of the knight. Now maybe bishop to d6 just prolongs the game. Queen to d6, you can take, take, but now look at this bishop to d7 uh, is of course uh, a checkmate. Bishop to d7, king to f7, we can simply take, takes, and now queen to d6 now also knight to e5 and the game is over king to g8 and now we can play uh, bishop to e6 and the game is over so this is simply not working so let's go back after move knight to d7 you see actually the game is lost even if you move the knight still this move bishop to b5 is devastating uh here for black so uh, that's why black needs now to react with f takes e6 so you see the move bishop to b5 you should really never never forget uh because it's i think the main tactical and aggressive option uh here for white so let's go uh let's go back to this moment uh here we have said queen to g2 was played what black could also maybe try is maybe to play bishop to b4 black need doesn't have to maybe escape from uh from this attack maybe black is trying to deflect the queen here from the defense of the rook but actually here queen to f4 is still uh waiting for white the uh we're threatening here checkmate on f7 the queen is hanging so probably your opponent will take out uh here the queen uh pardon me the rook with the queen and now we play queen to c1 this should be again a much much better continuation here for white so as i said uh, my recommendation is let's go back c takes d5 knight to f6 e4 knight to e4 we have we play d takes c5 knight uh, queen knight to c5 or queen to a5 could happen if queen to a5 then we play bishop to d2 if knight to c5 then we play bishop to e3 uh, we're attacking the knight as we said if e6 happens knight to c3 after bishop to e7 bishop to b5 is devastating for black bishop to d7 bishop to c5 as we said bishop to c5 and now d takes e6 is simply winning the game so uh please try it out sometimes in my opinion these uh, methods are not familiar to to most of the people people because uh, it's not so often played um okay the alternate fans itself it's not so often played but in my opinion 
using this method uh, could surprise your opponent and you could win games very very easily and win games very very effectively so okay i hope that you enjoyed the study i hope also uh, that you enjoyed this tactical sequences that are possible and that will probably happen to you many many times if you want to know more about the Austrian defense and also about the queen's game declined here's our um, uh, queen's game declined series playlist uh, you can check it out with some different opportunities for white and for black it's a very important series here on my youtube chat channel and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what to say chess is the best of course